big old figure it's not so bad okay that is giving you some representations in fact I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger representation supports and a representation of free body diagrams so here's what this is gonna look like okay so we've got uh, sketches of idealized support so you've got some type of a body being supported with a rope or a cable or notice it says flexible cable rope chain or wire Okay, and your free body diagram is just going to be this figure over here on the on the right. Get that out of there. Just going to be this figure right here on the right. And it's showing that that cable is in tension and there's some kind of a body. Now, I'd go one step farther. We'll have a force on this. We'll have a, a point there that represents the body, if you will. And then whatever that value is, and typically that's a W some type of a weight okay so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at there note says number of reactions one one per cable if you will the second one down is a roller we talked a little bit about that in the last couple weeks too didn't we so we could kind of get into that mode of thinking a roller okay is and you'll see it mostly is this example right here but notice there's a, there is a roller showing, then there's the ground or something it's anchored to, okay, and then the beam that it's, that's sitting on it. Now, that can also be, your beam could be vertical, and you could have this situation, okay, where that roller is in the y-axis instead of the x-axis, or along any plane for that matter. It could even be off at an angle, couldn't it? Just like that car in that video, or excuse me, in the quiz. Okay. Um, while we're at that, so we had that car that was sitting on an inclined plane, right, that was 10 degrees. And then off of that car, how did that work? Um, it, it showed that there was 90 degrees here, right? And then did it show that this was 30? Yeah. Except for that wasn't a vertical component, though, was it? Kind of cheating there. Let's put that. It was 30 relative to the... So you're going to kick yourself on this one. It was 30 degrees like this, basically, right? Okay, so if I draw a line right here, then this line is 10, or this angle is 10, right? But isn't this angle in here 60? Because of the perpendicular? Okay, so if we redraw that, wasn't that something like, uh, oh, did I draw it? Let's see, yeah, it's gotta be, it's coming off this way. If we tilt that axis, and that's 70 degrees, 60 plus 10. Okay, I've got this drawn way out of scale, but that's essentially what you had to do there. And I, you'll see that on that um, answer key when I post it. Yeah, I had to think about that one. Yeah, yeah. And, and darn when that happens, you have to think on a quiz, you know? Mm -hmm. But you're allowed to draw pictures and things on quizzes. I don't care about that, especially on the back side. Okay, so back to the roller. So oh, there's the incline roller right there. That's just another example. Okay, what are the forces? Well, on a roller, again, we said there would be a force in the Y, but there is no force in the X. Or in this case, there would be a force right here, wouldn't there? But nothing this way. Okay, and again, if I take a, a piece of pipe and roll it across the floor, no resistance on the, on the plane that the, of the floor. But there is a, a resistance perpendicular to the floor in there to hold that pipe up or it's going to the first floor. So that's the difference there. All right. Uh, then what? We got smooth surface, zero friction. Oh. If they're, you know, if they're showing friction, there would be another. They're showing that uh, 
we've got a force perpendicular to the surface, right? If there were friction, there would be a force probably in this case doing that, wouldn't there? But since it says zero friction, there's no force there. So even you know, if it's on an inclined plane, just keep that in mind. Anytime, and that's very similar to this or right here. If, if we went here, the only difference, and there would be nothing here, the only difference here is there's no roller between this one and this one. There's no roller here. So it would have to be stated if this smooth surface with zero friction. Then you would know that there's no force along this uh, or uh, parallel to the plane. It would all be perpendicular, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, then let's see. We got pinned. And, and again, we've been sneaking into that pinned application in, in all the stuff we've been working on uh, where we've got, you can see that pin there. And so you're just, on your free body diagram of that, your beam is just going to be represented by a straight line. And then you're just going to have and and I personally just say force in the Y and force in the X and I believe what the book will tell you if you don't know what it's going to be here's that nasty word assume it's going to the right and up okay and what I'm going to show you then later and we talked about this the other day what I'm going to show you later is if you make that assumption that you, let's say the force is going to the right and for some reason on that beam there was a force that was doing this. Well, well shoot, that was, I did that the right way. I got, I got to turn that around. If for some reason you said the force was going to the right and the only force acting on that beam was doing that, well then your force in the X is wrong because all your forces that you're applying to it are pushing it to the right, right? So the reaction at that pin would have to be pulling it back to the left. The reaction would have to be pulling to the left. So the FX would have to be pulling to the left at that pin. If, you're, if the force you had applied, let's say we put 100 pounds here and, and we made it, oh well let's say that's 70 degrees. Okay, well part of that is the 100 pounds cosine of 70 is pushing to the right, isn't it? Well, the reaction at this pin to keep that from moving would have to go back to the left, wouldn't it? Okay, so we assume the wrong way. When we do our, when we do our uh, calculations for what that force in the X is, what will happen is it will come out a negative value. So then you know you guessed the wrong direction. That's all there is to it. So that's why don't spend a lot of time trying to decipher what's my force doing there? What's it doing? You know, is it going to the right or is it going to the left? Don't don't waste a lot of time with that because if you guess one direction, and it's an educated guess, right? If you guess one direction, it comes out a different number and it's negative. It won't come out a different. It come out the same number. It'd just be a negative value. Then you know you guess the wrong direction. You just flip the sign and go on. Okay, you flip your arrow, and and move on. And I'll show you that as we go along. We'll have some examples of that for sure, because it's common. In some cases, you might have three or four different forces acting on a member, and one of them being cantilevered maybe off to the side. It's kind of hard to tell what that's all. What you know when we were doing those resultants, was it going up or down? You you really don't know. Especially on that, we did that cantilever problem. That can really throw things off. It's harder to, to guess then. Don't sweat it. Make it up and to the right. If it's wrong, it'll tell you when you do your calculations. As long as you do everything else right. Okay? Uh, what else there? So that's the pinned. Then the last one they're showing there is fixed. In a fixed situation, so that's like a a signpost that is hanging out or maybe you uh, cantilever a deck off of a house or something like that you know and you have to figure out what's the weight of the floor in the house going to have to do to or not the weight but just the, the members themselves what are they going to have to do to keep that from ripping out and going to the ground people falling getting hurt 
Right. And there is, a, I think there's an example in a book. Um, it seemed like, or I read it somewhere. It might have been online, though. I can't remember. Back in the late 70s, they had a big catwalk that in uh, Kansas City. And it fell, and I th over 100 people, I think, died. Yeah. yeah. And not only did they collapse, there, there were multiple crosswalks. Yeah. Yeah, pancaked. They failed and they pancaked on the lower, just dropped everything in the lobby. Yeah. And also took out the main fire main that broke open and then flooded the lobby. So some of the people that survived the initial collapse drowned. <laughs> drowned. Because the uh, main is Yeah. Yeah, they were pinned and couldn't get out. Yeah. And, but, and, and, and it shows it shows in that, I, in like, it might have been in here, uh, where they changed the design yeah, in the top. field. They changed the design in the field and didn't really do a good thorough check. And they essentially they took what was being weight just on one particular nut. It ended up being doubled up, and we'll show you later on how you you know how you calculate that. But it can be life and death. It absolutely can be, you know, what we're doing. So you know the fact that we're uh, a little bit off here or there, you know, it's no big deal, right? Till you're the one that's underneath all that mess, you know. So, yeah, it probably does matter. Probably does make sense that we pay attention. Okay, so uh, let's see. So here's the fixed situation. Now, note you got a, a reaction in the Y, reaction in the X, and a moment that's it's trying to rip this thing out of the wall, right? So there's some kind of a moment thing going on there, and that will. Uh, play a role in this. Now, normally, the reaction force, I would say that this reaction force is probably going to be going to the left most of the time. They're, they're, they're putting this in here because you don't really know what forces are acting on it, but if there's some kind of a force hanging out off the end of this beam, then more than likely your reaction force is going to have to pull back. Uh, typically, you won't see it pushing. Or it's going to push it out of the wall, isn't it? It's going to help pull it out. Okay, so that's those are your different, uh, uh, if you will, support reactions. If 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 we can say that. Oh, let's see. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this one. Copy that. Back in here. Makes it easier for me not to have to draw. Probably makes it easier for you not to have to look at my drawing. Okay, so here now. Now we're starting to get into the fun stuff. Now this might be one of those examples. Yeah, this is example one in your book there, Jeff. Page 65. So it says you got a beam here uh, shown in that figure 4.4a supported by a pin support at A and a roller on the horizontal surface at B. And all they want you to do is sketch the free body diagram. Now see, on a test, I won't say just draw the free body diagram. It'll all be one, one question. Is draw the free body diagram, and by the way, go ahead and figure out what the reactions are at A and B. Why not? That's what we're here for, right? So that's what I'll do on a quiz. I won't just ask you just to draw the draw the uh, free body diagram. But then there you can see it. So you've got it says in the in the problem, and you got to pay attention to the problem, right? For instance, in uh, problem was it two or four? It said your answer should be in t uh, pounds instead of tons, and was in big bold letters, not big but bold then I expect your answer to be in pounds, feet and pounds, not feet and tons. Pay attention. Call that attention to detail, don't they? That gun, you got to start doing that. You're going to be designing things that people are going to use, right? Or manufacturing them. Are, are any of you guys manufacturing? You don't have to. Or do you have to take this class for manufacturing? Yeah. Or design? Manufacturing? So... So some of you are going to be making the parts, right? But you also have to input into the design of it 
typically to make sure it'll all work. So I guess that's part of the reason why you're here. Okay, so we've got now if we if we knew what this force was at P and what the angle was, we could go ahead and solve for this problem. If you saw something like this, then yeah, it would just be a free body diagram because you don't have enough information to solve the problem. You don't know what P is, you don't know what the angle is, you don't know what the distance A is, and you don't know what the distance L is. If you had all that, you could figure out what the forces were that are reacting at A and B. Okay, we can't make the assumption now that AX is going to be zero. We can make an assumption that AX is going to be P times the cosine of that angle theta, can't we? Okay, and actually this would be a negative and this would be a positive. But you can see that we guessed the right direction because there's a negative here and a positive here, so they have to be working against each other. Okay, or would that be against or in conjunction with? I always like to keep it positive. I don't like to think of it as they're working against each other. Working in conjunction to keep this thing static. How's that sound? So we good on this? And normally when I do a BX, I do BX like this. Equals zero. That's the only thing I would add to that. And, and you could even go one step farther and say, okay, this is P sine of theta, right? And then there would be a force right here, P cosine of theta, instead of that, just that P there. Okay? So that's something you can consider as well. Sinking in? A lot of it should look a lot like what we've been doing up to this point. Okay? The only difference is now we're going to go in and solve for what's going on at A and B and make some sense of that. This is when we get into the good stuff. What we got on this one? Let's see. Okay. Yeah, this is just another example of the same free body diagram or similar type free body diagram. The only thing different here now is notice that this is on a roller and it's on an incline. So it's kind of combining two things there, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, and you've got this angle here. So what they're telling you is there's some kind of a force at this perpendicular, if you will, to this incline that has to push back to support that roller, doesn't it? There's nothing going this way, but there's definitely something going on right here. And that's what they're giving the force in. And you have to know what the angle is. Now, I would, I would argue that you want to know this angle right here, right? Relative to the horizontal axis. They're showing the vertical axis, but, and you could go ahead and calculate, or, yeah, calculate that. You would want to know what this angle is right here. Okay. Uh, let's see, this one, and typically, yeah, I guess what they're highlighting here is if this column is coming in here and there's no angle on that, then you have to, again, make the assumption that it's, it's actually, I think the word used there is it's implied 90 degrees. Okay? Implied 90 degrees. If it doesn't have some kind of an angle. If it did have an angle, then, you know, we know what it is. But if you don't see anything, then it's implied that it's 90 degrees. And of course, we have a reaction. This is pinned, so we have a reaction in the AX and the AY. And then we have the, they're saying now that we've got to, uh, we've got to account for the weight of that column in this problem, okay? Or the weight of the column and any kind of force that's, you know, maybe that's from the second floor pushing down in this case. Then you would have to account for all of that. 
which you'd have to go and find out what's going on at the column and then show that in your in your problem. Clark? I thought P was the weight of the column and W is the weight of the P. Oh, I guess it is in this case. Yeah, that's why it's halfway there. I wasn't paying attention to the fact that that's offset. Thank you. So yeah, W is the weight of the beam and P is the weight of the column and that's shown by B here. And then the weight of the beam, that, I guess the, the thing we need to look at there is the weight of the beam should be right in the middle of that beam, shouldn't it? Unless the beam is not, if you will, homogeneous. You know, if it's a beam that's fabricated and one end of it is a 12 inch beam and the other end is a 14 inch beam with the same weight spec, or not the same weight spec, but the same density. Yeah, weight per linear foot, you're still going to have, well, no, it wouldn't even be that. Yeah, it would just, the de if the density is the same you're, and your beam is bigger on one end, then you, you've got two different weights to deal with there. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, that's, I think that's about it on that one. We're just plugging away at these. Oh, that's not it. <laughs>